Welcome to News for Tuesday, April 28th. I'm Lorraine Caceres. Thank you for joining us. We begin with the latest on the tentative but accelerating reopening of the country. Some states taking significant steps opening this Friday, May 1st. Others keeping their lockdowns in place, even extending them, but laying out plans to relax restrictions in the coming weeks. This as the president makes a push to reopen the country and rolls out a plan for increased testing. The White House says the federal government is to act as the, quote, supplier of last resort for state testing. According to a White House official, the goal is for states to test a minimum of 2% of residents with a priority on vulnerable groups and emergency workers. But states say White House's plan doesn't actually offer a way to manufacture more tests. And Vice President Mike Pence is visiting Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota today to learn... Researchers are working around the clock trying to find a treatment to fight COVID-19. New drugs are being tested and vaccine clinical trials are underway. Meanwhile, scientific models are now predicting a higher death toll by August as states continue to reopen. Here's Andrea Linares. Researchers at Yale will soon begin a clinical trial looking into another drug, Ibutiles. It's an asthma drug. Scientists are exploring its potential for treating acute respiratory distress syndrome. That's a potentially deadly lung condition that affects some COVID-19 patients. In Miami, Florida, Andrea Linares. Lorraine, now back to you. Thank you, Andrea. And the search for a vaccine against coronavirus is ramping up. There are at least seven trials currently underway across the U.S. and the world. But many experts say it may be a year before there's a vaccine, and that's because trials on humans can take months, if not years. Our next guest wants to do something about that. Josh Morrison is one of the founders of One Day Sooner, a group recruiting people to get this be voluntarily injected with coronavirus. Coronavirus crisis continues to impact every aspect of day-to-day -day life. Many household products remain in short supply. Over a month later, some paper products are still hard to find, and although toilet paper supplies are improving, a shortage of other products could last until summer. Rafael Rodriguez has more. When we come back, those fighting on the front lines in New York as the coronavirus crisis continues to impact every facet of daily life, the city's subway system, the largest in the world, is buckling under the weight of increasingly critical issues from employee safety to rising crime. Here's Fabiola Galindo. At the same time, the transit agency is facing its own internal crisis. They have lost at least 83 workers to COVID-19, and they are facing a deficit in the budget. A city in Southern California has begun offering free coronavirus testing to all residents. It's the first testing site of its kind in a region, in a community densely populated by Latino and African Americans, two groups that have been disproportionately impacted by the virus. Jaime Garcia has the details. And as the coronavirus continues to batter a variety of American industries, Southwest Airlines is taking a huge hit for the... Meanwhile, across the border in Mexico, as that country's economy gets hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic, there is increasing hope that a new trade deal will inject some much-needed hope into the country's automotive business. Paulina Gomez brings us those details. The of cooperation will allow for this plan, supported by scientific evidence, to set an example for the reopening of other non-essential activities. Paulina gomez Bulchiner in Mexico City, U News. Thank you, Paulina. Coming up, how a trip of a lifetime turned into news. I'm Lorraine Cáceres, and this is U News. It was supposed to be the trip of a lifetime for a retired California couple who dreamt of someday visiting Europe, but their ideal vacation was suddenly cut short because of the coronavirus, and that was just the beginning of what turned out to be a horrible nightmare. Salvador Duran brings us their story. Many frontline workers are coming home to an altogether different fight, custody battles, if you can believe it. Some medical workers and paramedics are finding their excess, don't want their children living under the same roof as them because of a potential risk of exposure to the virus. Susan Myers is a practicing family lawyer and the president of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers. Coming up, unspeakable tragedy. And devastating news for a Nicaraguan family that has lived in Miami for decades. A son passing away from coronavirus complications just weeks after the 
the disease took the lives of his parents. Azul Alvarez has more on the tragedy and the impact on their loved ones. And the president of Japan's medical association discussing Japan's response to the coronavirus pandemic. Still ahead, a popular chain in here in the U.S. are looking to get back some form of normal day-to-day -day life. But for some in the South, that life involves a popular regional chain, Waffle House. Shay Rodriguez takes us inside one of their reopened restaurants where new health measures could soon be copied by thousands of other eateries across the state. Other major American companies continuing to pitch in during the coronavirus crisis, including internet providers. Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast have extended their policies to not charge. And they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and that's definitely true for a kindergarten teacher in Pennsylvania and her five-year-old daughter. As Marini Moroni reports, the girl tried to fill in her mom's shoes on camera. Definitely very adorable, and she could very well turn out to be a teacher. And finally today, a viral video from a hospital in Spain. This has been a sweet moment, and that's all the time we have for you news today. I'm Marine Casas, and on behalf of all of us here in the studio and those working remotely, stay home, stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.